Good afternoon, I'm Scott Lowe, and I'm coming to you once again from Tintree headquarters, and I'm joined once again by Mr. Ed Lee, who is the lead architect for Tintree, and we are here to talk about Replicate VM, which is Tintree's replication of the disaster recovery capability that's in the product, um, and it's pretty cool. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, about what goes into Replicate VM, how it works, and then we'll do a demo? Uh, absolutely, and, and thank you for uh, visiting us today, Scott. We're very happy to be here. Yeah. So, so Replicate VM, of course, is Tintree's uh, what we call VM Aware or Application Aware Replication uh, product. Uh, it's been available for uh, for for a while now, uh, and uh, one of the one of the things uh, we really noticed in terms of replication and designing this product is that today when you're configuring something like replication, usually for data protection or DR purposes, uh, these products are relatively complicated to use and configure. Typically, you would configure the replication of the data uh, using kind of vendor-supplied tools by, you know, by the storage vendors, separately from uh, the replication of kind of the, the virtual infrastructure stuff, right? And then there are products like SRM which can help you kind of coordinate and link these two up. But, but for the most part, the storage replication gets configured kind of separately from the virtual infrastructure. You have to somehow make all of it work together. You kind of ev have to evolve it together. And, and you don't always have kind of the level of granularity and control that you would always like. So for example, if I have certain VMs that happen to be sharing the same LUN, I don't really have the option of replicating just one particularly important VM. I usually have to replicate the entire LUN. And, right. and, and that can be a big problem when you try to restore, because now you know, you're under the gun, you need to restore this important VM, but now you have to kind of restore the entire line before you can actually bring up the individual VM. So, so various constraints are placed on, on your system, and, and, and the result of that is you have to spend a lot of time planning how you're going to do the replication, and a lot of time managing and keeping this whole kind of complicated infrastructure running. So, so what we've done with Tintree is we've tried to make the replication as simple as well integrated with the virtual infrastructure as possible. So, so with Tintree, for example, if you want to replicate a particular VM or application corresponding to VM, all you have to do is you know, right click on the VM and say, you know, protect this VM by replicating, and then, and then choose one of the uh, remote VM stores. Uh, you don't, not much advanced planning required, uh, you could almost do it on a whim if you like. Uh, I don't plan, you know, I don't recommend that you do, but uh, in fact, it was so easy to use that. <laughs> Many, uh, some of our beta, early beta customers, you know, they, were, they were testing out this feature, they configured the replication, and then you know, when we're having beta feedback with them, they, they would say, you know, it, it was so simple, we were wondering if we were doing something wrong. Yeah, we're wondering whether it's actually replicating, right? Right. So. Uh, That's a good problem so, to have, though, if it's that simple. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and so one of the things we really w uh, would like to enable is, uh, I mean, a lot of customers today uh, have not really bothered to set up DR because it's, it's too much work, or maybe they have set up DR for their tier one applications but haven't done it for tier two. So really want to kind of uh, uh, make it a lot easier for people to use replication and also to use it for more than just maybe quarterly testing of, uh, of your DR functionality. Um, the Replicate VM feature also, along with uh, our new kind of REST-based APIs, uh, which, which we will be releasing, uh, allows you to further automate uh, the data protection and uh, disaster recovery scenarios uh, in a customer environment. So, so now you could script data protection, uh, replication configuration, failover, failback, uh, using these kind of high-level VM level and VDIS level abstraction, rather than having to use things like runs and volumes and then having uh, to kind of do a lot of reverse mapping and mapping to figure out exactly what you need to replicate, what kind of policies mm -hmm. you need to set, you know, you know, that kind of thing. You can basically just tell the system, you know, even in your scripts, replicate this VM, or you know, I want to now clone it and you know, do a failover, a failback. So, so make it really easy to fully automate the system. The difference is uh, kind of like the difference between using a modern kind of high-level object-oriented programming language versus using assembly. Uh, the difference in complexity is really that, that big and obvious. Yeah. Very cool. Now, you mentioned SRM in that, in that um, discussion as well. Does this, this is a array-based replication technique, yes. but does it replace completely what SRM? No, or no, Is no. there still opportunities for SRM to 
kind of go along with this. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we will be releasing an SRA uh, for use with SRM. So customers can uh, choose to either use SRM or if they don't want to, uh, if they want something a little more lighter weight and uh, you know, they could also just use kind of the native tin tree replication functionality and cloning functionality okay. as well. Yeah. Now you said it was really easy to use. Yeah. C can you prove it with a demo? Uh, sure. Excellent. Uh, and then you could you tell me afterwards whether, you, you know, whether it's... All right. You, we'll you, we'll, you we'll you score it one to five, <laughs> with five being the best. How's that? Okay. So this is the uh, main tin tree GUI, the dashboard for the main GUI. And uh, the, so the way you would start out is by configuring replication for the box, right? So we go to the settings menu. And this is basically telling the system what are the other VM stores I have available for replication purposes, right? So I select the replication option. You see that, uh, you know, we already have two remote VM stores that defined uh, that we can replicate to. And to configure those VM stores, you pretty much just have to type in an IP address, uh, you know, a name you want to call it if you want, a convenient name. And then there's also a passphrase. You could use the same passphrase on all the boxes if you like. This is just to make sure that you know, the finance department doesn't accidentally use the you know, uh, engineering department's VM store, that okay. kind of thing. And then pick the, the physical network over which you want the replication traffic to go out over. Uh, many of our customers have a separate physical network for you know, transferring data outside of the site uh, versus inside it. And that's basically it. And if you want, you could set uh, throttles uh, for you know, business hours versus you know, off business hours. And that's how you essentially add a VM store uh, into the environment. So pretty much you just need some IP addresses. You know, that's the main information. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And once you've done that, now you need to pick which VMs you want to replicate. So we go to our per virtual machine view of the system. And, and you can see uh, the list of all the VMs that are uh, currently uh, accessible from, from vCenter. You could also see the replication state of those VMs. You see some of these VMs already have replication configured and some don't. So let me right click on a VM, say without replication configured. And if I want to start replicating this VM, I select the protect option. You see oh, that wow. this VM is using uh, the default snapshot schedule. If you're happy with that, you could just leave it, you leave it like that. And then, and then this is what you have to do to replicate the VM. You click this box. And then you, know, you, you can pick which VM store to replicate to. And that's basically it. You click the protect button, and now that VM will start replicating. Once you've configured replication, any snapshots that get created for the VM, whether it's their scheduled snapshots or you create them manually, will be automatically replicated. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I would call that pretty easy. Yeah, so, so, so let's take a look at a VM. We'll actually see replication in action here. So let's take a VM here, uh, this one here. It has replication configured. So now, if I just create a snapshot for that VM, that snapshot is gonna be uh, replicated. So let me just call it demo what in capital C. Right? And then I'll click the take snapshot button. You see that a snapshot was created. And now that, uh, that snapshot is in the process of being replicated. In fact, let me refresh. Oh, it is already refreshing here. And you see now the replication state has changed to catching oh, very up, cool. right, showing that that VM is being replicated. If I double click on it, uh, you can see things like replication throughput over time. Now on this particular VM, not much has changed. Uh, so we're not gonna really see a big spike or anything. But if I mouse over the throughput, you can see that we show you both uh, the logical throughput in terms of logical bytes being copied, as well as the physical network bandwidth that's being used. And the difference between the two is the savings you get due to our uh, compression and dedupe, right? So using very eff effective use of the available network bandwidth. Right? That's very good. So now let's go to our destination box, and I'm gonna refresh the list of snapshots that are now accessible on this box. And you see that snapshot that I had just created has already been replicated. And now, now we're wondering, well, did it really replicate the right thing? Is this VM going to start up when I need it? And how am I going to test this, right? Uh, well, very simply, just right click on the snapshot, select the clone option. You could choose uh, what host cluster the, the VM should be added to. You could also specify any additional customization specifications if needed. You click the clone button. That, clone, that VM will be cloned and added to vCenter inventory. All you have to do is power it on. So, so very easy to configure, test, use. 
And, and with our REST-based API, you will now be able to script all of this from uh, you know, Power, PowerShell or PowerCLI. Ed, that's pretty awesome. I mean, thank you for yeah. showing us the technology today. And um, yeah. So was that simple? It was, that was uh, five, <laughs> yes, okay. you get a five. All right. Um, I wish we had a prize, but you'll just have to take our thanks yeah. for it. And your presence is sufficient, Scott. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for your presence and for inviting us here today very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching and come back and watch us for some more videos.